Thank you and welcome. Glad you came to tonight's fourth and final forum. I have to make a correction. Last time I thought it was the fourth, but it was actually only the third. So we started here with the first one, went to Jackson for the second one, JFK for the third one, and we're back here for the fourth one. And what I wanted to do tonight is give you a handout of the proposals and the latest draft form that I plan to take to the school committee on September 13th. And I thought it was fair that you'd have a chance to look at them and then have a month to think about it and prepare your comments if you want to speak to the issue. Because when we get to the school committee on September 13th, of course, you know we have public comment first. And then school committee would be presented the proposal later in the meeting. So I thought it only fair that you have the meeting, have the proposal before the time. Do you understand? Does that make that, that clear? <laughs> okay. So. What's important uh, where I am right now in developing this proposal for the school committee is that unlike prior to now, uh, the current schedule is not one of my ideas as it is. The current schedule with an additional 20 minutes to the elementary is one of my ideas and that's the first one there. And that comes after consulting with uh, Joy on the bus schedule, the elementary principals and the elementary teachers. And what happens right now is that the buses just can't get to the elementary schools at the, at the end of the school day. So the kids whose parents pick them up leave at the end of the school day and the kids who ride the bus actually sit in the hallway or sit somewhere um, for 15 to 20 minutes until the buses can actually get there. So by extending the elementary school day to make it equal or more equal to the middle school and the high school time, we actually improve uh, the bus service and we extend the learning time in the elementary school. So regardless, I'm, I'm going to ask the school committee to consider a change and not to stay exactly the same. However, um, proposal two there is if we took all of the start times and increased them all by half an hour, again, keeping the extra 20 minutes in the elementary school day. So if we were to do that, you can see how that would look. Um, again, trying to keep within the parameters of the three-tier bus schedule and keeping consistent as we've discovered over the course of these meetings that nobody wants to see an increase in cost. So again, the three-tier proposal and just moving things helps us to create a no cost option. And then finally, the third proposal is if we were to move NHS to 815, but then move JFK back. Uh, JFK would start 15 minutes earlier at 740, NHS at 815 and then the elementary is at 855. So that is our latest thinking of what we would take forward for school committee to discuss and vote on, December, on September 13th. And so I will start with the usual format of, I'll be here until 8.30, you have my undivided attention for this listening session. Uh, I will ask Tracy Herity, uh, my executive assistant, to take the microphone around to hear your comments. And I know even though we're a very small group tonight and we can hear each other, we need you to use the microphone so people on the television can hear more clearly what we have to say. And people do watch because they, they call and let me know. Uh, so with that, there are some new people here tonight. I would ask that new people get to speak first and then everybody will have a chance to speak. And Steve, no time limit. Enjoy. <laughs> Who would like to get us started tonight? Renee? Um, I'm Renee Wetstein, and I have an uh, incoming freshman uh, who's sitting next to me, and a uh, junior, and I have um, someone that just graduated. And I proposal three. I really like, I do feel sorry for JFK with the 10 minute starting earlier, but I think um, the 45 minutes for kids through, you know, ninth grade to, to um, senior year is really critical. I love that it doesn't cost anything. Um, and I think the five minute um, later elementary school start time won't be a real pushback. I know pr a prior, your, your predecessor did try to do proposal two, and I think it maybe was nine ten, and that was just a huge pushback for elementary school parents that need to work. So um, I think proposals two should be scrapped because I think it just could cause a lot of 
pushback and controversy and people would get very upset. Um, but proposal three, I love, I appreciate after all these forums that we got somewhere. Um, and I think it's really just so important for the high school students. My son just got his schedule. He's taking on his geometry at 7.30 in the morning. And um, <laughs> it's, it's terrifying him. So, so I appreciate that. Thank you. I suppose I, I'm the opposite of a new person, but uh, we need uh, need some comments here, which I'm glad to give. Uh, my name is Steve Harrell, and I've been working on this issue for quite a number of years. Uh, I was on the original uh, su Superintendent Isabelina Rodriguez's um, original uh, start hours uh, uh, ad hoc committee uh, back in 2008. Uh, along with a no number of other uh, school officials and citizens. Uh, at any rate, I also agree that I like Proposal 3 very much. Uh, the later start time of Northampton High School to uh, 8.15 looks great. Of course, I'd like 8.30 or 9 even, but uh, 8.15 uh, will certainly be a significant uh, provide a significant amount of extra sleep for the teens, which they so much need. Uh, again, I'm sorry about JFK having to be pushed back a few minutes, uh, but uh, you have to put these things into a scale and weigh them. Uh, and maybe we can deal with uh, JFK uh, in another year or two. Um, I also agree that elementary uh, the elementary parents will uh, absorb the extra five, the uh, later five minutes. I do remember that previous uh, session uh, where, uh, as Renee has said, that uh, the elementary parents were very much uh, against uh, a later start, uh, too much later for uh, their children. So um, I hope that the school committee uh, We'll look closely at this proposal number three that Brian has come up with. Uh, Brian uh, mentioned to me that he, uh, this may have been a proposal originally uh, set forth by uh, Susan Wright, who uh, chaired the, uh, the aforementioned ad hoc committee. Uh, Susan, of course, is now the finance director of the city, an extremely intelligent, hardworking woman. So uh, uh, I, I'm glad that Brian picked up on that. and. Uh, Hopefully, we'll move forward at this time. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Zach. I'm Zach Dietz, and uh, I, I'm an incoming freshman at Northampton High School. And I'd like to say that Proposal 3 looks the most promising to me. It looks the best. And um, I'd just like to say now that even though the, the middle the, uh, even though JFK would start 15 minutes earlier, it's definitely worth it for the 45 minute gain in the high school. Um, and I would just like to ask uh, Mr. Saltzer, what uh, proposal do you favor the most? Are you gonna suggest one to the school committee? Or are you just giving them to uh, all these proposals to the school committee? What are you gonna do when you're giving them? It's a good question. It's my job to give the proposals to the school committee, allow them to discuss it, and they will vote on it and decide. And whatever they decide, then I will implement with my team. More thoughts, questions, comments?
course. I guess I have a question for Stephanie, who is um, chair, if you can, or the mayor's chair, vice chair. What would you need to see, or would like to see, in the next month that you think you and the school committee would need to make proposal three a go? I'm seeing this for the first time also right now. Um, so the things that pop into my head are what we have to do in terms of negotiations um, because the longer day at the elementary school would be something that we have to look at. That's a significant change. Um, one that I think is a great idea with, with not having nothing to do with start time. I think that's the time has come for that anyway, but that has to be negotiated. Um, <clears throat> I'm not feeling like I'm overly concerned about how um, elementary and middle school parents are going to respond to this because I think that the changes are not hugely significant for them. I mean, the, the start time at the middle school, while it's um, earlier than it is now, it's still later than the, what the high school is doing now. Um, it's, it's, 15, it's 15 minutes. Um, and the elementary start time by five minutes doesn't seem something that, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't think that's of concern. Um, so we certainly have to vet the whole later school day with parents and with, with negotiations with the teachers. Um, right now, that's what's coming to the, to the top of my head. Okay. I'll think about it some more. I think it's a good sign that we've held enough uh, public forums that we've had everybody having the opportunity to share their thoughts and comments and questions and have their questions answered over the course of the past uh, five or six months. Um, so I don't feel like we need to sit here in silence uh, until 8.30, but I do want to give ample opportunity if there's anybody who's thinking, you know, came tonight who wanted to share, I really want you to have the opportunity to have your voice heard in this discussion. I guess my question is for the school committee. Um, thinking about negotiations, do you feel like that could be a deal breaker as far as changing the times? I, I don't know how to begin to address that. <laughs> I really don't. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm curious as to. Well, the question of negotiations. The timing of this is very good because this proposal is going to the school committee September 13th. And if they vote a change, it's for the following September. As luck would have it, we start our negotiations hopefully in October uh, with the unions, and we hope to have that completed by June. So we could have, I mean, the timing could be right if, ne if there's a change to be made. Yeah. Yes. Um, hi. I just wonder if you could speak to... Um Part of proposal number three, I'm wondering, I haven't been following all of the many public forums that have happened. Um, so, I, and I know that there's obviously research about what time teenagers should, you know, get up or how much sleep sh they should get and doing better in school and so on. So I wonder, uh, has there been any discussion of switching the elementary time and the high school time as part of proposal three? I mean, I know that that would be a fairly radical shift for elementary you know, students and parents. So that in and of itself might cause some larger waves, you know, but. So that I understand your question, you're asking if we had considered um, the elementary start time being earlier at 740 and then moving the middle school to 855. Oh, so the high school would be 855? Uh, no, to tell you the truth, I hadn't thought of that. Um, yeah, go ahead. The reason this even comes to mind is, um, you know, anybody who's got little kids knows that they all, 
often tend to wake up early in the morning, even if their parents don't particularly like that, you know. Um, but, but also, when, when you have elementary students, it's very common for their siblings to be in middle school, have a middle school sibling. It's perhaps slightly less common to have an elementary student and a high school student. Um, you know, I mean, obviously it happens all the time, but I'm just saying it's slightly less common. So to have an end time uh, of your elementary student uh, be 245 and then your middle school student be 215, that's somewhat closer together as opposed to having your elementary student ending uh, at 325 and your middle school student getting out more than an hour earlier. Your question is a good one. And there's certainly no reason that you would need to follow all of the discussions that have occurred around this issue. Um, but I can say that over the past, I believe, depending on who you check with, seven to nine years that this has been discussed, I believe just about everything has been discussed. And one of the reasons uh, f for the reluctance to move the high school start time later was the later dismissal time and its interference with sports and activities. So um, I hadn't considered going that late mainly because trying to make, trying to find some middle ground for the activities and 2.45 to start your sports practices and theater activities which go into the evening was about, uh, about as late as we thought uh, reasonable. Yeah. Maybe Renee can think of some other reasons why that seemingly uh, great plan won't work. Uh, I know it certainly has been discussed. But I think that uh, one of the factors was that uh, in generally keeping the same uh, time frames that we have now, the great the elementary students uh, might have to stand out or go to their bus stops <clears throat> in the winter before it's light. And I think everyone was opposed to that idea. I'm not really, I kind of remember that vaguely. It had to, had to do with the school runs that the elementary school runs take so long. But I think with this proposal three, I don't know if you can run it now that we see these times. Can you flip the Northampton High School and elementary? I don't know. But um, an elementary is a later day, shorter day. So then it would end later. So um, you know, that could be an issue with the pushback from sports. Renee and Steve are actually the veterans of this <laughs> initiative, so <laughs> I defer to them for the history. <laughs> yes, Stephanie. Oh, I'm sorry, you have one more question? Of course. How, how would, this, would this have any effect on the start and end time of Smith Volk as well? That was a question. That's a very good question, and no, it has no impact on the start time of Smith Volk. Yes, sir. Uh, hi, Jose Baskin, a uh, parent of kids ranging from the class of 2014 to the class of 2026. Oh. Jack. Thanks, Jack. Um, I was at the first of these forums and I left feeling really discouraged. Um, and I've heard reports from the uh, intervening ones and I'm really happy to see um, Proposal 3, which seems like it's really incorporated uh, some of the ideas that have been proposed and seems like a really solid working proposal that addresses um, a lot of the issues and concerns that have been placed out there without, um, without, we hope, too many unintended consequences, which tends to be a problem. You pull one thing and it pushes something else. Um, so I just wanted to applaud you for um, the process and sticking with it. And um, this seems like a really solid outcome. And um, I hope the school committee looks on it favorably. Two things. One, I'm thinking more about the, what school committee is going to want to hear. So I think one of the things we'll want to hear is how this impacts the choices for taking classes at Smith. 
um, and I think we'll want to hear how it impacts um, when kids leave for sports and are they missing any more cl of class time than they were before. Um, because it's my understanding that as it is now, fourth period, the kids who might have to leave for sports are, are missing part of a class time. So I, I think we'd want to know if it's impacting that. So those are two more questions that I come up with. And if I come up with anything else, I'll, I'll let the superintendent know. Um, but I also just want to take a moment to acknowledge that although this was not the superintendent's priority for his focus on his first year, that he did hear the charge from the school committee and um, took it to heart and um, over time has evolved a plan that you know, but that, that we people seem to be thinking it looks looks good. Um, so I just want to acknowledge the hard work that's gone into that from central office. Um, it, Brian's worked with our, our director of transportation, our business manager, and um, there's, there's a lot of um, kind of complicated logistics with the bus routes and all of that. And um, I know there are some people who think that this was just kind of an easy thing, just you know, make it happen. And you, you don't just snap your fingers and make something like this happen when it's um, um, as complicated as this really is. So I thank you for um, taking the charge to heart and coming up with a plan that the school committee can now vet. Hi, Monica Green. I have a senior and a middle school eighth grader and a recent graduate. Um, I just wanted to ask for a little bit more information about the three-tiered busing at the beginning. If you could clarify what changes that you mentioned, the elimination of some stops, and I wasn't sure what it meant um, when you said the passes wouldn't be issued until an application was submitted. Could you? It's a good question. Our previous practice would be that we would reserve a seat for every child who was entitled to a bus pass. So there are students who have free or reduced lunch prices who get either free bus passes or reduced fee bus passes, and we reserve a seat for them. Not all of those students use the bus. Um, some of those students would never use the bus. So we've decided that we're going to reserve the seats only for the students and families who come and pick up the bus pass, because that's an indication that they're actually planning to use it. Um, by doing that, we are able to reduce, I believe, at least one bus route, two bus routes next year. So we're able to reduce our transportation costs. Um, so you know that's one of the positives that coming through, one of the many positives that coming through this whole process uh, over the past couple of months is that we've learned a lot about streamlining our own, uh, our own system. So we'll be able to reduce bus routes, which saves our costs, which certainly has no impact on the start time, but is good for the system. And uh, secondly, the three-tier bus system is the most efficient way, financially efficient way, to transport students to school. It was um, something that was designed and put together 10 or more years ago. And there has, okay, more. And there has, though it's been studied over and over, there is no more efficient way financially to bring the kids to school. So we wanted to stick with the three-tier bus system because any change to that would increase our costs and therefore would make any start time change unattractive. Did I answer that question completely? Okay, thanks. Yes, Andrea. So would that consolidation happen? Sorry. Would that consolidation happen anyway, of the bus routes, on any of these? Already done. Thank you, Joy Winnie. Well done. She's worked very hard on this, not just with me over the past couple of months, but for the past, how many years have you been here? <laughs> for a long time. Joy is saying that when she started here, we had 17 buses and we have reduced that to nine, which is a considerable savings in transportation costs. That's due to some very hard work on routing um, from Joy and her bus drivers. So thank you. Any lingering questions, comments? All right, well, I appreciate you being here tonight. I appreciate 
many of you for sticking with me through all of these and uh, helping this plan to involve, helping us create a better system. I especially want to thank the students in the back. Chalk has been at all four to assist us with the uh, sound. And I thank you very much for that. And we have a newcomer tonight um, who is here joining us. And uh, your first name again? Abby. Abby, thank you. And Andrew, who helped us through three of the four, uh, was unable to be here tonight. But I want to make sure I say thank you to him, too. Uh, and our cable TV cameraman. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll see you on September 13th. <laughs>